Hello, everyone. I am so happy to see you again. Our friends Kathy and Susan are coming for drinks and nibbles tomorrow, so I want to clean up this entrance hall. Also, I want to make a big flower arrangement for the urn on this entrance hall table. And as a reward for the work, I'm going to whip up a sinfully delicious pumpkin souffle that you and I can enjoy together in the parlor in front of a fire. So let's get cracking on this cleanup job. When I clean, I always clean from top to bottom. This microfiber dust mop with an extendable handle does a great job on the wallpaper and all of the woodwork, including the pocket doors in the entrance hall. I can link the mop in the description box below if you are interested. Now I am removing dust from the window hangings in the hall. This cordless handheld vacuum does a great job here. Then it's on to the painted door frames and acres of chair rail molding. I'm using a damp microfiber cloth. For the baseboards, I'm auditioning something called the Magic Eraser. I know that a lot of people have raved about this product. The eraser did a respectable job on the baseboards, but sadly, it deteriorated rather rapidly. Maybe it is not meant for 200-year-old woodwork. To dust the games tables in the room, I simply rely on a dry microfiber cloth. I also use a dry microfiber cloth to clean the conquistador that lights my staircase. Finally, it's time to vacuum and mop the floors. and the entrance hall is clean. Now, earlier I said that I wanted to make a flower arrangement for this urn. Let's go buy some flowers. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes. 
Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know At the supermarket, I am looking for flowers that will show well against the green and gold window hangings in the entrance hall. Wish me luck here. Home again, I find a deep bowl that will just fit the urn in the entrance hall. The bowl will hold the flower arrangement. But before we can arrange any flowers, we need to gather some greenery from the garden. Branches from the blueberry shrubs will work, as will some long sprigs of boxwood. My policy is that if you can make an arrangement look good with only greens, well, the flowers are just icing on the cake. You really can't go wrong if you have a lot of greens. Well, I think this arrangement turned out pretty nice. This is the front side. Let's bring this arrangement to the entrance hall. I want to see what it looks like in the urn. The entrance hall is clean, the flowers are arranged. Let's make the pumpkin souffle. This souffle is really easy to make. I think it tastes even better than pumpkin pie. You might like to try the souffle for Thanksgiving or some other occasion. And the first thing we need to do is preheat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 220 degrees Celsius. And then take a six to eight cup or two quart baking dish, and it should be round and have straight sides, and butter it really well. And then to give the souffle a really nice crust, sprinkle it with two tablespoons or so of regular granulated sugar. You just pour that in and then swirl the dish to coat the sides. I'm going to put the dish on a baking sheet and set it aside for a moment. You want to make sure that your oven rack is in the center position. And I'm just opening a can of pure pumpkin puree. This is a 15 ounce can which is 425 grams. Put the pumpkin puree in a medium-sized bowl. By the way, this is my own original recipe. To the pumpkin puree, add a half teaspoon of kosher salt and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Actually, that was ginger. One teaspoon of ground ginger. Then we need one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. 
and a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. And just mix it all together. And set the pumpkin mixture aside for a moment. I'm going to need one and one third cups or 295 grams of caster sugar. Caster sugar is simply super fine granulated sugar. My supermarket used to sell it, but they don't any longer. So I'm going to make it myself. So I have put some regular granulated sugar in my blender. I'm going to blend this until the sugar breaks up and becomes super fine. And I think that's it. Have a nice sugar cloud here. And from this, I need to measure out one and one third cups or 295 grams. There we are. Put my scale away. What makes a souffle rise in the oven are egg whites. And the whites should be at room temperature. Cold egg whites won't mount properly. So I have five large eggs here, all of them at room temperature, and I need to separate them. So I'm going to put the white in this little bowl and the yolk in another bowl. You can freeze the yolks. We won't need them for our souffle. And the reason I'm separating the eggs this way is because if you accidentally get any yolk in with the egg white, the whites will not beat to their fullest potential. We're going to beat the egg whites. So use the whisk attachment. Now I'm using my stand mixer, but of course you can absolutely use a large bowl and electric beaters to beat egg whites. I'm going to start beating these egg whites at medium speed. And when they start to foam, I'm going to add a half teaspoon of cream of tartar and one tablespoon of regular cornstarch. The cornstarch will absorb moisture from the steam as the souffle bakes in the oven. Now I'm going to beat these whites to soft peaks. We are at the soft peak stage. So now I'm going to start adding the caster sugar a little at a time with the mix, mix, mixer. I keep wanting to say mixture with the mixer running at high speed. And I'm going to continue to beat until stiff peaks form. That's going to take about five minutes. I think we are there. Yes, we have stiff peaks. So now take a nice spoonful of the stiffly beaten egg whites, add it to the pumpkin mixture, and then just roughly fold it in to lighten the pumpkin mixture. There, it's lighter already. Then add the pumpkin mixture to the egg whites. This smells just heavenly and we haven't even baked it yet. And then fold the pumpkin into the egg whites. And to do that, you just plunk your spatula straight down and then bring up what is on the bottom up to the top. So down, turn, fold. This technique enables you to mix ingredients without deflating the egg whites too much. I wanted to mention the reason that we need castor or superfine sugar here is because regular granulated sugar will 
give the souffle a, a gritty texture and we don't want that. So pour the mixture into the dish. This is a voluptuous mixture. Smooth the top just a little and then pop this into the oven and immediately lower the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius. Bake until the souffle puffs and a layer of meringue forms at the top, about 55 minutes. And while we are waiting on the souffle, I'm going to go light a fire in the parlor fireplace. Here's our souffle, and as you can see, it puffed to the heavens. And here's that beautiful meringue top. And what you do, as soon as this comes out of the oven, is rush it to the table, and then you take two spoons or two forks or a fork and a spoon back to back, and you separate the souffle. and then dish up delightful servings for each guest. You are my guest today. You are always my guest, all right? What a perfect autumn dessert. You could serve this souffle with coffee or tea. I'm serving it with wine. This is a Sauvignon Blanc. A taste. You do not need me to tell you how wonderful this souffle is. I hope you will give it a try someday. And as you've just seen, a souffle is really easy to make. The beaten egg whites do all of the work. Just make sure that you use a souffle dish that is not too large. If the dish is too large, the souffle really can't puff much. So always go with a smaller dish. For this souffle, a six cup to eight cup souffle dish is just perfect. Again, thank you so much for hanging out with me today while we cleaned the entrance hall and we made that flower arrangement and we made this gorgeous souffle. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you would tap the like button. And also, please leave a comment because I love hearing from you. I can post a couple of my other videos either up here or up here that you can watch between now and my next upload. And until then, please take good care of yourself and I will see you in the next video, which I think will be on Thursday. Chin chin. Thank you.